All right, so let, let's try to understand this uh, representation of images, which is used by computers. So we call this uh, digital image. And it's kind of sampling of like a continuous uh, signal, which is present in like 3D world. For example, if this is an image, so of course this image is like taken from like a real 3D world and 3D environment, right? So we have like everything, we have clouds, we have this greenery, then we have this uh, person's arm over here. So the way we represent this image, uh, which is called like digital images, we have uh, this array, right? And in this array, we have, uh, let's say X axis and Y axis. So we'll have like certain number of columns, certain number of rows. And at each location, we'll have some value. So each image is represented uh, in form of this array. And the value in this location actually represents what is being shown corresponding to that, that location in this image. All right, so let's try to understand this in more detail. So first of all, there are like two types of uh, images, uh, grayscale and uh, colored images. We'll talk about colored images later. Let's first try to understand how grayscale images are represented. So what we do is we have that array and each, each value uh, or each pixel in, in that array is a number. And that number is between this range. It goes from zero to this number. All right, I will explain what this is. Now, the A superscript over here, it's like bit level. All right, so for example, if your bit level is 16, so it will be like two raised to power, raised to power 16 then minus one. So that will be the maximum number you can have in your image. All right, now, if you have like a higher bit level, which means that you can have a higher range of values in your image, which means that your image will be more detailed. But if A is very small, then you won't have like a lot of possible values which you can, which your image can take. So higher bit level means a very fine, uh, finely like a defined image. But if a bit level is low, it means like it's kind of a coarse level. Right? So usually what we have is uh, all the images which we capture these days using our phones, camera phones, it has a bit level of eight which means that the range of this number will go from 0 to 255. Right? And in this case, 0 represents like completely black, which means nothing is present there. It's like a black color. And 255 represents white. So everything in between is kind of mix of black and white. So it's uh, all right. So that's like one extreme. And this is like a very standard way uh, to store images. Of course, we have like higher bits as well because so for some application, we need more details, but this is the most uh, important one. The second is, let's say if A is equals to one. So this is called like a one bit image. So if we use A equals to one in this uh, particular uh, equation, then you can say that uh, your, the only values, possible values will be zero and one, okay. which means that the, the pixels in that image, they will be either zero or they will be one. So it's kind of a binary image because you only have two values. So if you have a bit level of one, that's called binary image. And if you have like a bit level, which is more than one, it's kind of grayscale image because then you will have more details about, about each pixel. All right, so here are some samples, like uh, it's the same image, but just different uh, bit levels. On the rightmost side, you can see that uh, the bit level is two. So you will have like four different colors. If you put like two in this equation, you will get like zero, one, two, three. And this is a bit level of three, and this is bit level of eight. So one thing you can observe is that uh, when we have a bit level of eight, uh, these will be like possible colors, and it's kind of more detailed as compared to the other two. All right, so then the question is like why we need these like different bit levels if higher bit level is better. And of course, mean we always want higher bit level, but that comes with memory uh, consumption, right? If you need bit level of eight, that requires a lot more memory as compared to bit level of two. So that was all about grayscale images. Now let's try to understand uh, how the colored images are formed. And it's actually pretty simple. If you have understood like how grayscale images are formed, RGB is like a straightforward extension 
And in this case, what we have is, we have three different channels for each band. All right, so this is the RGB image, but exactly this is not like just one channel. We have three different channels for this. All right, so RGB, uh, R stands for red, and this is green, and this is blue. And each of these images actually represented exactly the same way I described the grayscale image. All right, the only difference is in that case, uh, it was going from zero to 255 representing white and all the way up to black. In this case, it's saying that, okay, no red, all the way up to like complete full red. All right, and this is for green and this is for blue. So RGB images, nothing but three different channels. And when you combine these three together, this RGB image is formed. Okay, so let's try to uh, understand a little more detail like how these RGB uh, channels work uh, for, for, for us as humans. And uh, we do have these uh, cone cells, right? And these cone cells are like corresponding to either red, green, or blue. I will uh, talk a little more about this uh, uh, in the next slide. So one thing to understand is light has a wavelength and yeah, so this is an interesting fact. Like some people have four cone types, which means they can see like more colors. Some only have two, which means they can see like fewer colors. So this is an interesting fact. So that's fine. So this colorism, in, it's, it's a biological thing, right? It has been evolve, evolving like over so many, so many uh, years, million of years, in fact. And if you look at like the complete, the, uh, the wavelength band of, of light, the human vision like to which we respond is between 400 to 700 uh, nanometer. Okay, so this is the wavelength where we see colors. This is like to which our human system actually responds. And all the way th on this right, the 700, this is like corresponding to red. So that's what this uh, plot is showing you. And it peaks at this location around like, uh, I would say 560 or 570. And on the left, then we have this green, and then on the left, we have this blue. So this is like the patch of uh, the wavelength band uh, to which human vision responds. And that's how it's distributed. So there are like cones inside our uh, fovea, which are actually responsible, uh, responsible for this. And of course, man, if there's no light, I mean, there won't be any color. So light is making uh, all this possible. And regarding grayscale, like I mean, we can only, discriminate between a bunch of grayscale values. But if it, when it comes to colors, we can discriminate between thousands of different colors. And all that is like a credit to the cones we have uh, in a fovea. Okay, so these uh, cones are actually located uh, right over here. And when light falls there, so depending upon like what wavelength it is, the cones respond. And of course, like we'll have different cones for different colors. For example, for red, we have almost like 64%, green 32%, and blue only, blue only about 2% of cones. Right. And the other uh, important, uh, these uh, perceivers, neo perceivers we have, uh, it's called rods. So as these cones are responsible for colors, these rods are like, they're important and they allow us to like uh, see like in a very dim light. And these are uh, much more than like uh, the amount of uh, cones we have. This is roughly 120 millions. And these only like, uh, it's, it's just a, as, as, a, as a grayscale image, like it will just say that whether something is present or not. And it, it won't discriminate between different colors. And as I said, like some, uh, some humans only have two cones and other interesting fact is like dogs also have just two types of cones. So those guys who have only two cones, their vision is like, we can say same as like dogs. And the, the, the important part here is if you only have two cones, it means that you are only able to see like those colors, right? For which you have cones present. So for example, like if you just have red and blue, you will only watch those two colors. You will never watch green 